of y'all, this is Market Explainer, America's number one business news podcast. But before we do that, I want to tell everyone about our Patreon. We are developing a community over at Patreon. We want it to be a place where everyone goes to talk smack, to trade um, you know, <laughs> non-insider, publicly available information <laughs> on stock <laughs> trades. All right. Is everyone else sunk all of their money into uranium two weeks ago and now they're all sweating? That's I'm hilarious. really sweating. My yes, marketexplainer.com, patreon.com slash marketexplainer. I'll get you correct. in the same place. We, we would love for you to go check out our website. It has all of our sponsors and all of our other stuff there. Um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and, of course, our Patreon, like as I mentioned. Uh, and if you check that out, we're going to be adding some different shows up there, um, mm-hmm. some different style content, stuff that we want to do but doesn't fit into this format. We'll be over there. And then as time goes on, we'll be offering other rewards and so on. But uh, this first story, uh, China's Lehman Brothers moment is here. <laughs> All right, that's that's. I knew you were gonna uh, immediately tie these things, okay. and they are not in any way whatsoever alike. Related. Well, well they're definitely okay. not related, but they're not even alike. And I get where people <laughs> are. First of all, let's. Let's explain what we're yes, about to talk about. So Evergrande is China's premier property development company. They have about 300 plus million dollars in U.S. Of course, debt 300 billion. Sorry, 300 300, 300 billion dollars in outstanding debt. That's correct. Um, and uh, as, as people have dug into the internals of this company, turns out some of their practices are less than reputable. Sometimes they'll go and say, hey, we're building an apartment <laughs> complex in, in this city in, in China, and uh-huh. uh, we, we're going to take prepayments up front. And then they go, oopsie-daisy, we're not going to build the building. And then people go, where's our money? And then Evergrande goes, money? What, what, what money? So um, they claim to be part of 1,300 real estate projects yep. um, in 280 Which, Chinese cities. Let me uh, ask they you this also, question. Yeah, go ahead. Doesn't thirteen hundred for for having this much debt? Doesn't thirteen hundred feel small? Oh the, well, no, for, no, no. It's insanely small. And, yeah, and okay. this is this is what I would say. So according to the company that right. is that is now default technically, insolvent. but insolvent. according to them, they say that they have worked out a deal to come current, even though they've missed their first interest only payment. Yep. Hey, Not even full payment, interest only listen, payment. To, to the to the Chinese, you know, uh, capital and economic regulators. It's not like there's ever been an example in recent human history <laughs> that you can look at and say, hey, maybe uh, this is not going to work if we well, do this. Uh, but there's a difference between the Chinese market and the American market. We'll get into yes. that in a minute. But 100%. according to this company, they have 1,300 real estate projects in 280 cities in China. Right. Um, they are involved in electric vehicle production, property management, the film and TV production industry, okay. theme park construction, life insurance, yes. health care, Football and food products for infants. So okay. football being soccer, obviously. Yes, but so so this is a company that is. There's a, there's two parts to this. One, I'm going to say this out front again. I, I mentioned it already. The Chinese government and and stock market and how they run things is completely right. different than the American stock market. The Lehman Brothers and what led to that, if you don't know what the Lehman Brothers moment is, this is the right. moment that the Lehman Brothers in uh, 2008 yes. um, uh, basically went bankrupt, filed for bankruptcy because they couldn't cover their loans, and it led to, because of the subprime mortgage, they were heavily right. leveraged in the subprime mortgage, led to what we call the Great Recession. Right, yes. um, the the housing crisis of two thousand nine, the great financial crisis, is the great financial the crisis. Um, so uh, <clears throat> the so that people are comparing to this because of the amount of debt and stuff like that. Right. However, in America, we have a very finite. It's very difficult in America. Right. Everything ties to everything without a, a whole lot of whether you believe this or not, without a whole lot of governmental interference in the way things right. can fall. Oh, that's, Hold on. No, okay. However, in the Chinese government and the way Chinese stocks and stuff work, right. they feel like the world market, 
as we know it, feels right. like in this instance that the Chinese market will conceal this company because the Chinese yeah. market can do something as simply as the Chinese government could literally write a $300 billion check and go, right. here you go, y'all are solvent, we'll figure all this out later and go on about their business. Well, so the, the part that I like is <clears throat> this moment has been, a, has been coming for some time. And it wasn't, it was in the recent past, I want to say in the last two months, Evergrande announced that they were going to start building electric cars. And as a guy who looks at that, I go, oh, this is, this is simply stock manip. They're attempting to, I shouldn't say manipulate their stock. They're attempting to find areas to build a little bit of liquidity mm -hmm. to solve their liquidity issue here because they don't have the capital to keep their loans going. So they understand that the golden child of investment today is the electric car market, the emerging electric car market, China being one of the world's largest markets for electric cars. And yep. so they were trying to take over NEVS, which is uh, which another Chinese company failed to take over, which was the former Saab, right? So when Saab mm -hmm. went under from, uh, from General Motors... A company acquired them, but, but General Motors wouldn't release the Saab name, so they had to give them a new name. And that company never sold a car in its life. That right. Nevs never sold a car. National Electric Vehicles of Sweden, which was owned entirely by Chinese companies, and Evergrande said, we're going to take this over, we're going to start making electric cars. That didn't work out, and they tried another thing. They tried to do all of this to boost their stock, mm -hmm. raise capital, to prevent this moment where they went and solve it. Now, listen, I do agree with you that this is nothing like the Lehman Brothers situation at all, right? And the reason this is a story in the United States is, <clears throat> is, is we all are starting to understand, especially from the last year, our economies have more mutually assured destruction created in them than we could imagine. Than ever than in ever. history. That we history. are more connected than anybody of the the anybody that fears globalism or globalists for whatever right. reason. Uh, you should be more afraid now than any other. We are economically tied to all kinds Everything. of different governments around the world now, yeah. and this is this is how when I say I don't think this is a huge story, this is how it can become one. Not because of this. Uh, specifically, but because right. of what it can turn around and ripple. The country of China has used low debt, right? It's been increasing its debt. Companies right. in China have been increasing its debt, and China has been able to leverage that to fuel its gross domestic product for decades now, using right. cheap, non-existent interest loans forever, right? right? You can come in, get cheap money, and keep growing, and if you right. have a bad year, you just borrow more cheap money, right, and you right, keep right. going, and, it, and so it props up bad companies, and then you turn around, and this company was created in, I think, 1996, so you jump forward 25 years, you have a company that now owns the title of the most in-debt real estate company company in the world right. that can no longer make its payments, interest payments, on its right. $300 billion debt. What right. that turnaround and does, if this is the first of many of those types of companies to fall apart, you right. then affect China's economy that that does that affect domino the American ripples. economy that so, does infect it, you know. So, you know, Jerome Powell, of course, the, the Fed chairman said, now, there's not really a concern. There's not a lot of exposure in the U.S. market. And right. that's, that's, that's probably true. But the, the question is, um, markets don't function on things like facts, statistics, math, or reality. <laughs> markets, especially financial markets, um, operate entirely on feelings. Absolutely. Right? Emotion. And, it's and entirely can, yeah. emotion. And I know that people are like, you know, you can look at the metrics of a lot of businesses and be like, man, that stock is really undervalued. The point is, nobody likes the stock. Right. That's it. Nobody right. likes Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So we. So the reality is, the average American does not have a, a strong grasp on what the mutual funds inside their four hundred one k hold, what assets those the, their four hundred one ks hold. So you actually are are unaware of if you have exposure to this or not. Now, you might not have any direct exposure in your portfolio to Evergrande. It's probably the case for a lot of American people. Right. Um, but you may have 
exposure to something that is the second or third domino that 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 in turn falls because of this this uh, default at Evergrande, and that's mm-hmm. where this starts becoming the American story. Um, because as I said before, and I'm not going to say the G word because you know I, I want to continue to have a channel. Um, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. But globalism but if, is a, is, is a yeah, reality of a market. this is the first domino, right? If right. this is an isolated domino, look, this company only does business in China. They're not a company right. that turns around and, you know, is building real estate in Dubai as well right. and yes, New York yes, City right. and, and whatever, right? Their, I, their company is isolated to China, and that gives right. them a unique ability to insulate this matter. Correct. Now, and so, if it is a first domino, if it's a red flag of what... A bunch of other companies that also have been taken on debt Correct. and also haven't had success in their businesses and yada, yada, yada. Then it can become a bigger problem. Now, this actually came out, this story came out, what, a week ago? Close yeah. to a week ago? It's been building for a while. Right. So the market, though, the market scent of the market emotion yeah. As you mentioned, since this is people agreeing with me that it's an isolate, it's easily isolatable right. by the Chinese and? government. The markets have not reacted to it, right, right. Uh, and that kind of stuff. So and we this seem is, to all agree. And this is why I, the sentiment when other people have used the phrase, and this is not, I'm not the first guy to coin or even use the phrase Lehman Brothers moment. Mm-hmm. The reason I'm saying that there is an essence of truth to that. Is if you look at how people are reacting to, listen, we had senators go on TV and say, the President of the United States went on television in 2008 and said, listen, <clears throat> the fundamentals of our economy are perfectly fine. Right. Right. This is an isolated incident. That's, I'm hearing, this is complete deja vu from 2008. Right. <laughs> I was a mortgage. Uh, uh, originator at that right, time. Right, a loan originator at the time, yeah. Yes. All of this, I, I watched in horror. I was like, huh? I, knowing people that I'd, I had helped get mortgages were not in a position that, you know, I'm not going to, uh, you know, uh, Well, you know, but look, the myself. difference being that the Lehman Brothers thing back then, the Lehman moment was... There were people, because of just the sheer statistics of what was going on in the market, that Correct. predicted that. And, you know, you have... Now, you could... I, I could also see that you have a predictor in this. Again, I've, I've already said that they've been giving cheap to almost zero interest loans to companies that have not been successful in their business for right. decades now, right? But for those, all those dominoes to fall at one time would take a, a lot more. I mean, I think the only reason this is as big of a story as it is, is it's the largest debt company in the world, right? Right. I mean, the question becomes, and I think this is the question everybody's asking, is the question becomes, how does a company like this get to $300 billion in outstanding debt? And and you know what's even more interesting to me is a company called Citron Research um, out of Los Angeles came out with a white paper back in 2012 saying that Evergrande is insolvent and that most of their debt is, that that their position in the market was make-believe, right? And at that time, Citron had taken a short position, which the Chinese market or the Chinese regulators banned the company from trading. And this is the first year they're back allowed. They had a five-year ban on trading. This is the first year they're back allowed to trade in Hong Kong. Uh, but that's interesting that somebody that many years ago said, oh, this is we're, this is a problem. See this. And I and I have a hard time saying this because I, I don't say it lightly. This reeks to me of a good old fashioned scam. Right. Right. Where yeah. the people that were involved in this, meaning the upper echelon people, the board, yeah. the people, yes. the owners or whatever, have yeah. made probably millions, if not billions off of this company Correct. to turn around in it, the company itself to be three hundred billion dollars in debt. 
right? Correct. Which which doesn't going forward help the employees that they've already stopped paying, help right. the companies or halfway apartment complexes that they've already started building. It doesn't right. help anybody at the bottom, middle to the bottom. But the owners of this company and the board of this company has probably made millions, if not hundreds of millions or billions of dollars. Yeah. They did the they did a they did what I like the. Um you know, like the corporate raiders of the the eighties and nineties, mm -hmm. but they would just go leverage lever a company up to the hills. They Sears did, right? In recent Absolutely. memory, the, the the example would be Sears. Right. Uh, you know, a big you know uh, private equity company comes in. They they say, oh, we need. You know, they they lever the company up to the hills with with outside debt. Then yep. their company provides a bunch of uh, you know management fees, services, and, and yeah. And then they use that outside debt to satisfy those internal bills to their fund. And then file for bankruptcy. Oopsie daisy. Exactly. Right. So, yeah. And that's what this feels like to me. It feels like right. a company that's that's got away with it now for 25 years, probably right. got on the verge of getting caught a couple of times, but we're doing just enough work to Not stay to underneath get, yeah. the radar, right? They right. did finish projects. They did do this. They did do that, whether it was overpriced or over, you know what I mean? Build or whatever. Everybody just kind of overlooked it because they kept getting loans <clears throat> to cover yeah. it from year in and year out. And then if eventually a loan doesn't come through or somebody that's in charge of something falters or whatever right. and or you get a, a, a you get a person that's in charge of it i i give you an example um and this is in the the gambling industry in nevada there was a there's a, a guy i know that is one of the few people that does what he does in the gambling industry and he had a back what we call a backdoor deal with a, right. uh with one of the largest companies in the world that comes to gambling right right the point is, is he had made a contract with a backdoor deal with this guy that basically said, okay, as long as you get A, B, and C done, right. I'll make sure a check gets pushed for you, for you, for you. <clears throat> you keep your small company alive because you're providing a service, yada, yada. Well, that guy decides to take a job at another big company in the gambling industry. And guess what happens to that backdoor deal? Even though everybody's fulfilled everything, that backdoor deal's gone. Right, right? right, right. Now you turn around in that backdoor deal that was running just fine while he was there. Right. The company itself, the person that comes in and fills that slot, like, well, I'm not going to do that, right? right or whatever. Right, right. And now you affect how that company survives, runs, whatever, which in turn affects the first company, right? Right. Because they were getting services and yada. So this to me feels like one of those where maybe there was a lot of backdoor deals going on. I Again, I don't know how a company doing what they do gets to a a debt of 300 billion dollars like i correct I, how do you amass and, that amount of and, debt on a world stage and nobody blinks blowing a whistle eye. yeah and here, here's what i think ultimately i don't think this is this is a story but it it, it will be a non-story sooner than later because the ccp will just cut a check and it, life will go on Right. right. They'll buy and, out whoever's in charge of this or right. they'll throw them in jail one way or the other, with, <laughs> however they want to handle it. We don't have and, any opinion on the politics of the nation of China. Right. Absolutely not. And they will and they'll break it apart. Right. right. Into whatever yep. they see fit. Right. And they'll right. break it apart. Um, and, and it's just the way they'll do it. Right. And that's why right. the world stage doesn't see this as a big deal, because they know the Chinese government is We're going to step, step in in, in some right. way, fashion or form and do whatever they think they need to do to protect itself. Right. You know what I mean? That's that's all that boils down to. Exactly.